Hi guys, um, just a really quick video today. I was doing my time with the Lord this morning, just hanging out with him, and he reminded me of something that was in this book and I felt led to share it. So this book is called Visions from Heaven. It's by Wendy Alec. And if you have not read this, I cannot recommend it enough. So I'm just gonna share really quickly what he put on my heart. So this is on page 163. If you have the book, if you don't have the book, dude, what are you doing? You gotta get this book. All right. So it says, love. My love casts out all fear. My love casts out all fear, my child. You need not fear your enemies if you hold on to the law of love. Standing fast in the law of love confounds the prince of darkness. It puts to flight powers and principalities. It confuses and terrorizes wicked men and confounds deceived men. Walk in the royal law of love. Lay down your life. Hold fast to what is good and true and lovely. For in the future, good and pure and lovely will be far from the grasp, save for those who keep it in their hearts. Obey my commands, love my father first and foremost with all your heart and all your soul. Love my father with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. This is Jesus speaking in something that he shared with Wendy and she made the book. Um, I do want to say that like, yes, this isn't the Bible that I'm reading, but everything is scripturally sound. And that, and he goes on in other parts of the book that I don't have marked, um, just to talk about the strength that comes from living in love and the freedom that brings you and what it does to the enemy camp when you stay in that place and you love like Jesus. I was at work the other day and I was thinking about, I was thinking about a few of the characters that I've loved in the past of really, very well written shows and how we all want to be Dean Winchester and Sam Winchester and we all want to be Michael Weston and Fiona Glenn Ann. But when you think about it, the temptation to live like those characters might be massive, but they're miserable. They've been through some stuff and they don't always have the happiest of endings. And if they have a peaceful ending, they don't always have the happiest of roads to get there. But Jesus living from his place of love, he lived from joy and peace and even though he had quite the horrific death, he was raised to life again. And that horrific death was the cost that was paid to save all of us. He went through that in our place. It was worth everything to him. Heaven went bankrupt for us. Um, if I get on that, we will be here 20 minutes, <laughs> but it's so vital and important. And so, I don't know, we all want to be the action hero, myself included. Like I spend a lot of time in acting and making films and I still make films but when it comes to reality I think I'd rather have the walk of Christ and live in love and joy and peace and actually see efforts um, not efforts but intentions pay off eternally rather than those characters accomplished a lot but in the end what did they really accomplish you know and I'm not negating their good deeds. They did some good things, but I just see more and more every day how if you want to have your actions have lasting impact, follow his way, follow his love. Um, there's one other thing that I do want to share from this book, but I have notes that I think are worth sharing too. And they are a really good starting place if you're just starting to get to know Jesus or maybe you want to take that next step with him and you want to kind of think about how to realign your life and how to really live in a way that makes him happy. It is more important in this hour than ever. And actually my next video, I have a video planned. This was a prompted video, but I do a video planned in the future that I'm really excited about. It's something I want to talk about for a while, but um, we're going to hold off on that for now. Hopefully that'll be the next one for all I know. <laughs> It's up to the Lord, guys, whatever he puts on my heart. But it will be coming out, and I'm excited. Who knows? I might even shoot it tomorrow. I don't know. So anyway, but a good starting place. I saw these words, ironically, they're in Job. And I know, how often do you hear that? Where somebody's like, you know, I got something really good out of Job. Well, guess what? There's good things all over the Bible. Read it. It's worth it. Um, but there were these verses, and I thought they were really amazing. So I wanted to share them with you guys. Um, Job 11, 13 through 14 in the NIV. And it says, yet if you devote your heart to him and stretch out your hands to him, if you put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent 
And it's a verse that kind of cuts off mid-sentence, but those four things are such a good basis for keeping your life clean and pure and honoring to the Lord. You devote your heart to him. Everything you do is focused on him. You make decisions based on, will this bring me closer to Christ or will this bring me farther from Christ? Will this bring me, it's the same as when you're eating for weight loss or eating for a different um, goal or training in the gym. Will this bring me closer to my goals or will this put me farther behind? Devote your heart to God and do everything out of love for him. Stretch out your hands to him, reach out to him, pray, talk to him, make time for him, sit down and have that intentional time with the Lord bring him into everything you do. Read the word like you're starving to death. Get it in you. Get it in your system. Talk to him. Listen to him. Let him speak to you through everything. The Lord, this is not going to come up. I'm not going to elaborate on this in this video, but the Lord once spoke to me through a supernatural episode in 2014 when I had no other way to hear him. Like he will get your attention and he will make it very, 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 very clear. Now I'm more mature in my walk. I have learned some things. I have learned how to hear his voice. I know a little bit better, <laughs> but, um, Back then, like honestly, it's one of the most clear times I'd heard from the Lord up till that date. And it really helped me in a major decision I was trying to make. Like he will talk to you, but stretch out your hands towards him, reach for him, create that intentional time, that intentional space for him and spend time with him. Treat your Christianity like a marriage. If you are married, you are not going to do something that would put your relationship with your spouse in jeopardy. And honest to God, that is how I think of my wine walk with the Lord. Does this honor God? Is this something I want to bring into our relationship? Will this harm it? It's that level of seriousness and commitment that is needed, not only in this hour, but for our personal health and safety, it is your mental, your spiritual, and honestly, even your physical health, that is what you wanna draw from, that is what you wanna pull from. But it's that level of commitment that will help you to really press in and experience God more and more on a daily basis. So anyway, put away the sin that is in your hand. If you're holding on to something you know he wants you to let go of, trust me, let that sucker go, it's not worth holding on to. I don't care if it's just a shirt in your closet where you're like, you know, I don't have a really good feeling about this. I feel like the Lord wants me to remove it from my life. Let it go. There were things that I did a closet clean out and there were things a while ago. This was like two years ago, but there was, there were some things where they were fine. They were not an issue for like how I was dressing or whatever, but I just felt like the Lord was like, send them on. So it was hard, but I did it. And I know it's like such a minor example, like, oh, Megan, you like, oh, some shirts. Good for you. But like, it was a tough season and I loved those shirts and <laughs> they were from a friend, one of my best friends for a movie we were in together, but it's a different story guys and a different time. The point is honor the Lord above all else and he will honor that and he will draw close to him and he'll draw near to you. That's Bible. So yeah, trust me, trust me. He says you'll find him when you seek after him with all your heart. And if you're holding on to sin, you're holding on to something that isn't him and you're not seeking him with your whole heart. So put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent. That is a big one that I really want to spend some more time on in the future. But um, basically the point is guard what you watch, guard what you listen to and guard what you speak, guard what you involve yourself in. It's the little thing, the little, spot, the little foxes that spoil the vine. So it's the little changes that make things all right again. The little details, ah, somebody, ah, I'm butchering this. My, one of the pastors at my church says this way better than I do. But um, actually, I think it's Reverend Hockaday. Never mind. <laughs> Although I think somebody from my church has repeated it. But um, yeah, the little foxes spoil the vine. It's the intentional little fixes that will help renew. So yeah, Job 11, 13 through 14. Devote your heart to him. Stretch out your hands to him. Put away the sin that is in your hand and allow no evil to dwell in your tent. That, my friend, is an awesome way to amp up your walk and life with Christ and get to new levels in him, just to get deeper with him. And do it, man, see what he does to your heart because it is the most healing and freeing thing you will experience. Okay, so I have one last little thing I wanna to share today and I wanna go back to this lovely book because it's so cool, it's so good. Um, this quote comes from page 177 and if I'm wrong, okay, it's 176 and it's the Lord speaking again. And this, I just feel like is so important in this hour. And when I reread these quotes this morning, God just nudged my heart so, uh, I don't want to say so intensely, but you just know when you know, you know? And it was one of those times where I was like, I feel very led to share this and I don't want to put it off. So it starts on page 176 and there's like one little sentence on 177 that kind of ties it all together. But um, this again is Jesus speaking in a vision he gave Wendy Alec. Um, she says, he looked at me, his eyes flashed with fire. My child, live only for what is spoken about you in heaven. 
care nothing for what is spoken or written on earth that does not find its foundation in me. Care only about the reputation you hold with myself and my father. Care nothing for any reputation you may hold on earth. No wonder, no, sorry, no matter how noble nor how slanderous. People's views of you will change from hour to hour. Care only for my opinion, child. So these two things that I shared from this book are standards that I really try to hold myself to in life. I am not perfect. I am working on it but I have done a deep dive into a quest to truly, really fully experience God's love like never before. And I have been learning so much about him and experiencing so much healing and really getting to know my heavenly father, who he is and how he loves me and how he loves others. And if you do the same, if you live by the three things we mentioned in this video, the royal law of love we read in the beginning, the scriptures out of Job and that focus to live caring only for what his opinion of you is. If you let go of everything else and you just deep dive and really just into him and really just focus on what his opinion of you is and live for and from that, life will be very, very good. It may not be easy, but it will be very, very good. And he will meet you every step of the way. Well, thank you guys for listening to me. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And it's just been really cool to be able to come back here and share about Jesus and his love for his love for us and just the things I've been experiencing and learning in my own walk with him. So I am grateful for your time. Please check out this book. I'm not like sponsored at all. <laughs> I just, I'm not the kind of person who holds on to gold mines. Like if I find something good that will bless other people, I make sure they know about it. And this thing has been life changing for me absolutely life-changing. She wrote two of them. There's a sequel too, um, Visions from Heaven 2, and it's also very good. So if you're looking for something to like ramp up your spiritual life, check it out. You will not regret it. I promise you this is... I am going to use the phrase a field trip to heaven. That's how this feels when you read it, but it's amazing. It's like really sitting there and experiencing God on every page, and it will reignite your fire in ways that... I don't really think anything else has. And I, I live on Jesus. I eat, sleep, and breathe Jesus. I wake up with Jesus on my heart and I go to sleep with Jesus on my mind. Somebody said that in a podcast one time and I just loved it so much. And I was like, that is the standard. That is the standard in life for myself and for anything I wanna seriously tie myself to. You know what I mean? Um, with work commitments when, and as far as I can control them, because obviously I can't walk into a barn and be like, you are all saved now. This is how this is going to go. Like, um, it's just cool. That's just, that's it. When I get my own company up and running, that's the standard. And when I write a film, that's the heart I write it with. And basically the point of that is it's the standard I hold myself to. But yeah. Um, also since we're on the topic, Chris Valentin did a really amazing sermon on the love of God. He's been hitting it over the past couple of months over and over and his stuff has been phenomenal and life-changing and fantastic but the one the most re most recent one he did to the date i filmed this was fantastic blew my mind he always does but he like really did this time and he had a cool section towards the end on boundaries and where and just the love of god and how to reciprocate not reciprocate that um how to show that in your own life but what to do when it's not safe for other people because a lot of people skip over that and they're just like love 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 and crucify everything on the way and that is not what god wants us to do um i'm gonna link the sermon because i think it really enhances this especially since we opened up with the royal law of love and you know what that is so important i am gonna read it again because that thing <laughs> hit my life and it's life-changing and there's nothing that makes the enemy more mad than love so okay um that was on 163. All right, and then we're gonna actually let you guys go because this is getting a little bit long, but this is really important to me and so close to my heart. And pardon the motorcyclist if y'all can hear that. I didn't do the headphone thing today because I left them in my car. We'll just be honest, I left them in my car. All right. I'm gonna actually back up a little bit because I thought this was cool. I'll start on 162 and just read you a little bit extra and then we'll be done for today. But he said again, no cheap grace. 
Grace is never cheap. Grace demanded my life, my heart. Grace demanded my all. It demands no less of you, my child. It demands no less of the, no less of the least of my followers. Take up your cross each day, whether it be standing when all is dark and encouragement is far from you, when everything within you screams give up, give in, stand fast on what you know. Stand fast in what I have commissioned you to do. Stand fast against the wiles of the evil one. Stand fast against the stout words and persecutions of wicked men and stand fast against the agonizing arrows of those who are not wicked but are deceived and who persecute you. And turn the other cheek. Bless them, love them, pray for them. He looked at me, his eyes boring into my soul, and I saw the glimmering of a smile on his lips. Fervently, he added, for they know not what they do. Love, my love casts out all fear, my child. You need not fear your enemies if you hold on to the law of love. Standing fast in the law of love confounds the prince of darkness. It puts to flight powers and principalities. It confuses and terrorizes wicked men and confounds deceived men. Walk in the royal law of love. Lay down your life. Hold fast to what is good and true and lovely. For in the future, good and pure and lovely will be far from the grasp, save for those who keep it in their hearts. Obey my commands. Love my father first and foremost with all your heart and your soul. Love my father with all your mind and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Sometimes God just speaks something, you just gotta sit with it for a minute because you realize that even though you're actively and intentionally trying to do it, it's so, so vitally important. You gotta amp up what you're doing. Obviously I cannot elaborate because there's like, I've, I have mentioned a few things um there is this is the time to love your enemies something that's always hit me is love your judas jesus loved judas he knew what he was going to do and he loved him anyway and um to pray fervently for those people that's what the lord does so many times we want to get mad and we would think what would dean winchester do what would michael weston do what would fiona glenn ann do but the truth really is and it's not a cliche but what would jesus do and there's a group of people that I am personally struggling with, but I asked the Lord, what do I do? And he always says, love them. And I am holding myself accountable to that because he has spoken those words to me and I honor him above all else. So I will honor him and I will love them. If I don't love as Jesus did, my life is worth nothing. If I am not out there putting his love in the world, my life is not the light it needs to be. And this is not to convict anyone else. This is me holding myself accountable. The King, and King, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords has put us here for a purpose. And I know mine is to be an output of his love more so than ever before. And it's just, it just hits me all over again from time to time how serious a calling that really is. The love of the Lord is true strength. And I look forward to really growing in that. Well, have a wonderful day, guys. Be blessed in every single way. And as you continue to deepen your own walk with the Lord, I pray blessings over you in every capacity. May he meet you where you are and bring you to the next. In Jesus' name. All right. I love you guys. See you later. <laughs>